Thanks for watching another video from timelapseblog.com. Panellapse, which is also called Panellapse 360, is software with two distinct functions that are useful for timelapse. The first is creating pans and zooms in posts that look similar to moving tripod heads, and the second is for making day to night timelapse videos. I decided to check out the free trial version, but I had a couple of concerns with the software, so I contacted the creator of Panellapse who gave me a full version to test. I'll bring up those concerns later in the review. After getting the full version, I put in about 30 hours working with this software before making this review. The opening video was made using both of these functions. To better explain the first function of the software, pan and zoom, let's say you have a wide angle lens like my 14mm or a fisheye lens. When you upload these wide photos to your computer, there will be heavy distortion like this. The first step in correcting this distortion will probably be to import the file into Bridge or Lightroom. You'd then select the proper lens profile and let the software correct the distortion and automatically crop the file to a neat rectangle. While I normally recommend this as the first step in my Lightroom workflow, Panelapse works best if you export without correcting for distortion. Panelapse uses these distorted photos to make it look like the camera is moving. You can do this by picking the right settings for your lens and shooting start and end positions. Now here's the cool part about this software that first made me download it. Panelapse is supposed to let you do transitions between day to night shots. Anyone who's tried this knows how difficult it is. There's a reason it's called the holy grail of time lapse. There aren't many programs that let you do this and the most popular is over three times as expensive for a professional license. Panelapse works in conjunction with Lightroom or Photoshop because it isn't a full-fledged photo editor. Panelapse calls its day-to-night feature RawBlend. To understand how it works, here's my entirely unscientific understanding of RAW files. When you take a photo with your camera in JPEG mode, the camera locks in your settings through compression, making it harder to change. I like to think of this like a coloring book that someone already colored. But let's say you shot in RAW. Now your settings are still there, but more of a suggestion than a command. I like to think of this as a color by numbers drawing. While it might not be possible to change everything, you have much more freedom. If you shoot with Canon or Nikon, these changes are kept separate in a sidecar file that holds added metadata. Panelapse Raw Blend works with a photo editor to make changes gradually across these sidecar files. Let's say you have four photos with exposures that jump in the middle of the sequence like this. You can use your photo editor to change the settings on the first and last photo and then create a sidecar file for all of them. After this is all saved, open Panelapse and choose the first and last photo. Panelapse will then adjust the metadata of the files in between to make the transition smoother. Once the metadata is updated by Panelapse, you can tell Lightroom or Photoshop to read the metadata and update the files. Panelapse can alter many settings such as exposure and white balance to provide a smoother transition across frames. So what are the positives? The main positive is Panelapse lets you change settings that would otherwise be nearly impossible to do manually. This includes both the day to night and the panning function. Panelapse is cheaper than other programs that do similar transitions. I think the quality of the final product is pretty good, but I'll let you judge for yourself from the video. I applied the MSU deflicker filter for virtual dub to these clips because I found it worked better than the deflicker filter included in Panelapse. As for the negatives, my biggest problem with this software is that it feels more like an alpha or beta build than a professional piece of software. This is probably because the limited audience makes it hard to devote as much time to testing as other software. The software usually works well if you know how to use it. If you're just learning and try to make adjustments mid-workflow, the program tends to give mixed results. I don't think I've had the software crash, but I've gotten a few error messages. The most annoying was a not a number error on a photo between two edited keyframes. I eventually had to reset all my changes and start over. I've never repeated this error. The problem I mentioned at the beginning of this article was from using auto exposure with the default smooth cubic interpolation mode in only two keyframes. This made the final video much darker than the unedited version. I still don't have a good explanation of why this happened, but adding additional keyframes throughout the photo sequence seems to be the best way to overcome this. Smooth cubic without auto exposure, linear mode with auto exposure, and linear mode without auto exposure all worked well. Lightroom takes a couple minutes to save metadata to sidecar files, but Panelapse takes over an hour for the same photos. 
I think the program was faster the first time I used it, so this might have started when I tried using more threads on my i7 processor. Despite the negatives, I plan to keep working with this software. It might not be my go-to editor, but it definitely adds some cool effects that are almost impossible without it. The license also grants access to all future updates, which is impressive. I'm happy to say Panelapse has come out with a few updates lately, the most recent just three days before making this video. At the very least, it's worth trying the free trial version from the link below this video. The test version offers full functionality, but only exports to 720p HD video. If you try the software, please let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.